from the Sinful Horror Stories. Sit back, relax, and stay sinful. Enjoy. Me and some friends went to an abandoned mental asylum at night, not really expecting much. We busted in one of the boarded up windows, and when we were inside we all heard talking. We figured other people were there so we followed the sound. We were walking down the hall and heard what sounded like a woman whispering, Why did you take my baby? Over and over again. At this point I'm visibly shaking and we all believed we found where the sound was coming from. We go in this room and there was a huge cage. It looked like one of those pet carriers, but human sized. I don't know what the fuck happened that night. I don't really believe dead people were talking in there, but the sheer creepiness of it all is just too much. My cousin and his family, wife and infant son, had lived in their house for about five years. His wife left home to drop the baby off at daycare before work, but realized she had left her phone at home. Entering the house, she turned the corner to the hallway and nearly ran into the drop-down attic door, which was fully extended. They never used the attic, as it was filled with loose insulation, and my cousin had left for work hours earlier. She quietly left the house, drove down the corner and called the police. When the police investigated, they found a short-range transmitter connected to several cameras hidden throughout their home. The light fixture in the shower, the ceiling fan above their bed, even a pinhole in the nursery were sending videos to a nearby location. Their neighbor a few houses away had been given a key by the prior owners and installed surveillance equipment once he knew their schedule. My cousin's wife walked in on him updating his equipment, but he forgot something at his house and left to get it when she walked in. He had been watching them for years. I worked at a women's clothing mail order catalog call center. During training, a veteran worker was talking about getting to know the frequent callers and the story of one of them. There was an elderly lady that used to call in often. She was blind but would have the manager of the complex help her pick out things from the catalog. She would order often, and they got to know her by name. Eventually, the lady stopped calling. They contacted the number they had on file, which was the apartment manager's number. The old lady was fine but had to be moved to a new building because, well, the old lady was very meticulous with her cleaning. She cleaned everything often at old lady level. The manager had come in to do some maintenance for the first time in many months. Every room in her apartment above head level had thick webs and nests of black widow spiders, hundreds and hundreds of them. Can you imagine an oblivious old lady walking around blind in a house she thinks spotlessly clean? But there is a soul-freezing nightmare swarming all over the ceiling. This happened to a friend of mine. She used to live in an entirely different town when she was younger, and her closet had this strange door in the back of it. Whether it was imagined just due to her being a child at the time, or if it really did happen, she started to hear noises coming from behind this door whenever she went to bed. She told me that several times she tried telling her parents that she was hearing these noises, but they never believed her. Some time goes by and one day her parents get a call from the police because they just arrested a homeless man. This was not just any homeless man though. This homeless man was living in some sort of tunnel that goes straight to that door in the back of her closet. So every once in a while, for whatever reason, this man would come through that door and watch my friend sleep in her closet. This is a true story about my grandmother that takes place before they had children. My grandpa Darrell worked night shifts so my grandma Dora was home alone most nights. Her sister-in-law Rose would randomly come over to keep her company. Dora decided to go to bed early one night. Rose came over that night to see how she was doing. She went to Dora's bedroom after calling for her 
with a reply of, I'm in bed, just come in. Upon entering the room, Rose starts acting weird and telling her she really wants her to get up and come help her with something in the kitchen. Dora was ready to go to sleep and was already in bed and really didn't want to. Rose was really adamant for her to come help her, telling her it was urgent. After a while, Dora eventually got up and followed Rose to the kitchen. Upon entering, Rose whispers in a panic with tears in her eyes. There's a man under your bed with a knife. Dora, of course, didn't believe at first, but seeing the panic in Rose's eyes, she couldn't not believe her. They proceeded to call the police and left to the neighbor's house. Cops came and found a man hiding in the closet with a butcher knife. My friend was visiting family in the States. They lived in a rural community of Maine, and one morning she woke up before everyone else and decided to go for a run. After 30 minutes, she turned back and started noticing a van following a few blocks behind her. She thought it was strange, so she started turning down a few streets with the van following every move. She started sprinting and the van sped up too. She ran to the first house she could find and started banging on the door. No answer. She hopped the fence and started banging on the next door. Dog in the house started barking at her, but no one answered. She jumped into the empty pool in the backyard and hid while dialing 911. A car parked in the front of the house, and a man started calling out to her, offering to give her a ride home. The dog in the house was now barking like crazy and the man left after about a minute. Police showed up and took her back to her family's place. She gave a report and they identified the van from a nearby HVAC business. It had been stolen earlier that day. About 30 years ago, my mom went on a blind date. Her date took her to a restaurant, and although he was nice enough, she just wasn't into him. Not even halfway through the meal, she was already thinking of ways to leave early. The waiter could tell. While my mom's date was in the restroom, the waiter approached her and asked her if she was okay. She explained she was on a blind date and not having much fun. Turns out the waiter was just about to get off work. He offered to give her a ride home if she waited another 10 minutes. She considered it and was about to say yes when her date came back from the restroom. She gave a subtle head shake, no, to the waiter and smiled. She and her date finished their meals and he took her home. The next night my mom was watching the evening news. Story comes on about a woman being raped and murdered behind a restaurant the night before. The restaurant was the one she had been at. They showed the murderer's picture and it was the waiter. I used to live next to a senile old woman who would knock on my door late at night crying and saying there was somebody on her roof. I'd always have to assure her that it was just possums running around and that everything was fine. This went on for years until her kids finally sent her to a home and new people moved in. A week or so after this, I woke up to police cars on the street outside my house. I asked the new neighbor what happened and he told me he got out of bed and saw legs dangling out of the ceiling in the kitchen, and he assumed he was being robbed. The guy got away, but when the cops checked inside the roof, they found chairs, cans of beans, water bottles, magazines, and some blankets. The old man had been set up there for at least two years, assuming her complaints coincided with him moving in. She once told me her dementia was so bad she'd sometimes have to go grocery shopping, a few times a day, because she'd come home and realize she forgot to buy anything. I wondered now if it was just because he was taking all of her food. My high school teacher attended Central Washington University in the early 1970s. She and her best friend Susan Rancourt were leaving the library late at night to go to a movie. Susan was offering to carpool together on the way out when they were approached by a guy with a broken arm, trying to carry a diorama of some sort. He asked for some assistance, which they both gladly agreed to, 
but my teacher had left one of her books in the library. The last she saw Susan was her smiling face as she graciously helped this guy to his beetle. Susan was reported missing, and it turned out that she was abducted and murdered by Ted Bundy. My ex-wife and I woke up in the middle of the night to find all of our lights out in the house. We had not lost power. The living room light that we always leave on overnight had been turned off. The bathroom night light was removed and placed under the sink. The computer had been unplugged and the monitor cord was unplugged and neatly folded on the desk. All of the doors and windows in the house were unlocked, undamaged, and standing wide open. Our bedroom door was open, and the TV we always fall asleep to was turned off. Nothing was taken. Our cats were both hiding behind the refrigerator, and stayed there for most of the next day. Whenever someone came and knocked at the door, our larger cat would start to growl and stare at the front from then on. She no longer does this after we moved. I had awesome parents who let me sleep in the living room on weekend nights when I was very young because my little sister was a light sleeper and I would stay up till dawn. Of course, I always ended up sleeping on the couch because Nick at night made me tired. One night I wake up to a prickly feeling like an instinct, I just bolted into a sitting position and stared out the front window. We lived in rural Georgia, so you can imagine the magnitude of the trees. In perfect light cast from the moon, I see a silhouette of someone in this fucking tree. The family dog bashes to the window and is snarling into the glass. Terrified, I run into my parents' bedroom, try to explain to my parents that there is a strange person outside. My dad grabs something defensive and darts outside with our dog to find out what's going on. I tremble in mom's arms until dad comes home, says he saw no one and to go to bed. I decide to sleep in my regular bedroom. I fill in my sister what has just happened. Dad is making regular rounds in the house with a cup of coffee. We're all still and finally I think I can sleep. Nope. I notice the man outside my window. From what I can see in the moonlight, he gives me a shush signal and runs away. Just turns around to run a straight line. When I was a teenager, I was home alone one weekend, and I was sleeping in my parents' room since there was a TV in there. Sometime around 2 a.m., I felt like I was being watched from the direction of the hallway. I look up and I saw a shadow person staring at me. It was weird because it was a pure man-shaped black mass, and I could see him in the dark hallway. I'm guessing the light from the television helped. I sat up and stared back, but I was terrified. We looked at each other for probably five seconds, and then it turned and walked down the hall. A few seconds later, I heard a loud crash. I was so scared I turned the TV to the Disney Channel and stayed awake for as long as possible. When I woke up the next morning, I walked down the hall to the bathroom, and that's when I noticed a mirror that was hanging, fallen off the wall. My family still doesn't believe me, but I know what happened. Laying in bed one night, it's pitch black apparent from the light creeping under the door from the landing. My mom was actually with me in the same room, as we had only just moved in and she was sleeping on the floor. I look up and the door slowly creaks open, and slowly an older woman peers around the door, looks at me and walks away. I just thought I was having a nightmare, turned around very fast and went under the covers, hoping I would wake up. Then I will never forget my mom whispering to me, Did you just see someone peer around the door? Safe to say we didn't sleep a wink that night. I was a rookie cop when my brother committed suicide. He was one of my older siblings, but we were very close. He died in another state, and I had a lot of guilt about not recognizing the signs. His remains were in bad shape by the time he was discovered, so it was a closed casket service. About a week after he died, I was back at work one night. 
and my partner and I see a pimp pistol whipping one of his girls. I jump out and the pimp sees me and the foot chase was on. I was running after him gun in hand and he cuts through a narrow corridor under a building that leads to a courtyard in the middle. Right before I reach the courtyard, I hear, it's okay, in my dead brother's voice. I hit the courtyard and the guy is against the side pointing a gun at my head. He squeezes the trigger twice. I froze for a millisecond and then started beating him in the head with my revolver. Till this day, I don't know why I didn't just shoot him, cuff him and walk him back to the street and find my partner. I tell my partner about him squeezing the trigger, but not the voice I heard. We unload the gun, which is a 32 revolver right there, and two bullets have strike marks on them. Take the gun to the lab for testing. Tell the tech the story. He puts the two bullets with a strike mark back in and shoots into the test tank. Both bullets fired. I hope you guys enjoy these horrifying stories. It was a pleasure to narrate these. Be sure to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe for future content. Email your true scary stories to thesinfulsavant at gmail.com. I'll include my email link in the description box below as well. Till we meet again, stay sinful.